What's up, fam? Welcome to Building Business and Life Together with the Masons. I am Sheika, and this is my handsome husband, Anthony. Yo, so we got a great, great, great topic for you guys today. Yes. One that's near and dear to us, but it's talking about understanding the impact of different parenting styles. Right. So let's let's talk about the roots of this. Let's get to the roots of it. Did you know that your parenting, like your current parenting style, can be influenced by how you were parented as a child? That is correct. And it is a constant and ongoing cycle. Mm -hmm. Some things are beautiful. We love them. Yes. Traditions that we carry on to the next generation for our kids. And mm -hmm. then there are some things that we just want to ball up and throw them away. throw away. It's trash. Yes, it's trash. Right. So. so one thing that I want to talk about is really just the different eras. Okay. Like we talk about the disciplinarians from the 70s all the way up until the free flowing, free spirited parenting of the early 2000s. Um, and really just how those different parenting styles over the generations have impacted who we are as parents today mm -hmm. and what that's doing in terms of affecting our children um, mm -hmm. of tomorrow. Right. So let's 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 talk about it. Um, mm -hmm. I think for me specifically as a child, mm -hmm. the parenting um, style that my parents have, like I was, I was yelled at a lot. A lot. Without being extreme, I was yelled <laughs> at a lot. Probably because you were doing something you weren't uh, supposed no, to be I'm, doing. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Uh, <laughs> so I was I was yeah, I, there was lots of yelling. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't want to paint a picture of like, that's all that was going on all day. Every day. Exactly. But like but, it was, it was earned yelling. But okay? it's funny that you should mention that. Well, not funny, but since you mentioned shouting at your children, there was an article that I, um, or a post on IG that I read. And it says that studies says shouting out children is just as harmful as physical or sexual abuse. And I don't know how to take that or how to feel, you know, how I feel about that. Um, but just this one part says that the study says that verbal abuse can manifest in the depression, substance abuse, and even affect someone's physical health, causing issues like obesity and lung disease. So just yelling at your kids can cause all these things, according to a study um, in a post that I saw on Instagram. So what are your thoughts about that? No, I think that that is, I mean, it's a, it's a lot in there. Mm -hmm. So you're saying that from... Ver so essentially yelling or verbal abuse. So has... verbal, yeah, I think, but I think there's a difference between yelling and verbal abuse, right? So the way it that It depends. You, I mean, it could be the people. words that, sh that that are used. It can be the tone in which you mm -hmm. use it. It can be the delivery. Right. Um, all together. Mm -hmm. uh, what I would say in terms of how you talk to your kids mm -hmm. and, and within this article, how it can, there can be a, a similarity mm -hmm. between the two. I think that the way that you talk to your kids and the way that you deliver whatever it is, dissatisfaction, mm -hmm. how you discipline mm -hmm. them, any of those things, I feel like how you deliver that and how you talk to your kids becomes their inner voice. Right. And that's going to have an effect on their mm -hmm. self-esteem, um, their self-worth. Uh, you can tell sometimes by just looking at a kid how they're treated by their parents. Yeah. Do they walk straight up? Is their head high? Is their mm -hmm. head down? Like mm -hmm. how do they respond when they're talking to adults? So I think that all of those things do matter. Mm -hmm. um, so 100% I do believe that I'm not, I, I don't know, I'm not a doctor, so I wouldn't say that associated with sexual abuse. Yeah. Never been sexually abused, um, so I'm not, I, I can't relate the two, but I yeah. can definitely say that it is going to have a lasting effect okay. on, on your child. Verbal, emotional, physical abuse can have a lasting effect on anyone. Oh, so yeah. Oh, yeah. I guess that's where this article is coming from. Um, but that's but, crazy. Like, yeah. Wow. But have you ever, like, thought about different things that your, your parents have said to you as a kid? Like, my mom used to always say, look. Look, when I was growing up, we did this or did that. Like, are there any things that you carry for from your childhood that your parents said to you that we're you're now saying to our daughters? Um, that I am now saying yeah. to our daughters. Mm -hmm. I know there's one like children are to be seen and not heard. But do you say that, or have you ever said that to our kids? I've probably used that like one or two times. But really? then, like thinking about it right now, though, cool. yes, yeah, like when they because like. If they interject, like if me and you are having a conversation and mm -hmm. it is an adult conversation, but yes. they just so happen to be around, mm -hmm. you know, when you have a teenager in the house that feels like they can relate or interject into an adult conversation, like yeah. I could see that as being somewhere to use it, but it, it's it's actually crazy mm -hmm. to say something like that because then you're you're trying to dim the light. Like if your if your yeah. kid feels like in that moment is something that they have the input, I guess it. I don't know. I it it would really depend on on the, the topic, mm -hmm. but that is crazy. Children are to be seen and not heard. Yeah, I mean, they used to say back back in the day all the time. So, that so that's crazy. something I most definitely didn't carry forward in our um, parenting skills that we, you know, 
use today. But I do know that that is one thing. Um, another thing is um, when uh, is one saying because it's it's saying like scientifically, kids actually do more of what you do versus what you say. So I know my parents used to say, "Do as I say, not as I do." Okay, so it says that you know habits are wired and and their behaviors that you have, like they, they're soaking up what they see more than what you tell them to do. And that saying is, I guess, it's kind of con- contradicting because it's saying do as I say and not as I do. Like our, our nine month old right now, she looks at me, if I'm snapping my fingers and dancing to the music, she's gonna do the same. But if I say, no, don't do that, she looks at me and laughs and she's gonna keep doing it. But she imitates things that I do in my body language. Yeah, I, I, I think the biggest thing to take away from the piece with regards to the science behind it mm-hmm. is when you talk about do as I say and not as I do, mm-hmm. really what it's going to come down to is the programming around it. Like right. that is something that is embedded in us subconsciously mm-hmm. is to take those same, uh, what do they say? What do they call them? Uh, old adage. Mm-hmm. The old adage would be, you know, whatever the quote is, right? So I would say in that moment, like for us, it's really to be cognizant of the fact that we are reaching back to something from our childhood, whether it's positive or negative. It's Mm -hmm. actually just being aware of what you're doing and becoming more conscious as a parent. Of what you're doing in front of your child. To not just say, oh, well, this is programming or Mm -hmm. as people say, like even when it comes to things like from the past for us as African-Americans, like we leverage the fact that these are things that our ancestors did. Yes, it's programming. But it in order for us to make an effective change, yeah. we have to consciously stop and think about what we're doing. And that's what we have to become and do as parents. We have to become the parent that we wanted. Yes, this is true. In order to be an effective parent, you have to become the parent that you desire. Right. So when we talk about you know the different types of parenting, um, I researched a couple different styles, and there are eight. So there are eight different types of parenting. There's authoritative, authoritarian, permissive, neglectful, helicopter, free range, attachment, and positive parenting. So those are the eight. And when I read those, I was like, huh, I wonder what type of parenting my parents did versus the type of parenting style that I have. And of course, out of the eight, um, you can go across all different ones, right? Oh, this is, this, like, is, this is good, though. I think we should call our parents. <laughs> we should call our parents and find out. What did, what do they feel like, what type of parent is As a matter of fact, you know what? Let's call our parents. Okay, let's do that. <laughs> all right, y'all. So I have my parents here. They're on a call with me right now. Hey, Hi. hey, hey. <laughs> We've got <laughs> Larry and Letty Robinson live from Florence, South Carolina on here, where they're going to... At age eight and ten, we made sure that they was able to write checks. We told them about bank accounts. We told them about saving money. Well, you know, we uh, trying to trying to, trying to make to them be self self sufficient, basically, yeah. because I think all parents, whether whatever style you use, you know, with me, I'm gonna be honest. Yeah, I was authoritarian, but I only did it to prove to you that nothing comes easy in life. Hmm. Yeah, and I agree. I agree with both of you, and so, Dad. You took on the same exact parenting style as what you were parented with. So you were your your grandpa was authoritarian. You were authoritarian, and now you have a daughter that is free. What you said was permissive. <laughs> I hope that was entertaining. <laughs> but back to what I was saying. For me, I feel like um, growing up, my parents were authoritarians. So when I looked at authoritarians, it says that authoritarian parents are strict and demanding. They emphasize obedience and discipline, often with little room for negotiation. Like, even if I try to tell my side of the story, I was told that is not what happened. This is what happened. And I had to go with it. Right. That's just the type of parenting, you know, happened back then. You just be quiet and you listen and you take your punishment. Um, While this style can lead to well-behaved children, which I was a well-behaved child, straight A's and everything. um, It may also result in a lack of independence and self-expression. I don't say I have a lack of independence, but I would say self-expression. Um, I do have a lack of, well, I'm working on that, but growing up, it was a lack of self-expression because it was more of, okay, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. Um, but for us, but how does that, so, so with that, how does that translate into, um, your parenting style today? Exactly. 
the good or or the bad? Like what what has that done for yeah. you today? So it's, it's opened my eyes to make sure or to make sure that I'm more aware of understanding my kids and listening to them and making sure that they are able to express how they feel or understand why they did what they did before um, you know, taking away a cell phone or iPad or anything like that. So when I looked at that, I figured that we are more authoritative parents. And authoritative parents are parents that are both nurturing and firm. And so they set clear rules and boundaries while also being responsive and understanding, which we are. And this style promotes a healthy balance of discipline and warmth, fostering independence and self-esteem in children. So I felt like after reading all eight that me and you took on more of an approach of just like, okay, let me understand why, why did you do your homework? You know, let me understand why, why did you hit that kid at school or, you know, whatever the case may be before jumping to conclusions. Yeah. I, it's funny because when we talk about like the history piece, right. And Mm -hmm. just how the things that happen with you as a kid, like Mm -hmm. just as an example, okay. can I share the scissor example? Sure. So without going into full detail, Mm -hmm. one of our children was going to a SZA concert (laughs) and it was based on, it was a birthday gift. So was this three weeks later after the birthday is Mm -hmm. when the actual concert itself was. Right. And you just hope that your kids do everything that they're supposed to so that they can enjoy the gift that you just got them. And I was going to SZA concert too, so I want to go too. And let me just- matching outfits and everything. It's crazy. So (laughs) just how history repeats itself- My first basketball game ever. My dad got me tickets. Mm -hmm. Michael Jordan was playing. It's going to be the first time that I got to see Michael Jordan play. Just shows my age. Mm -hmm. Michael Jordan's playing. And I come home from school. I didn't have a good day. And my dad was excited to give me those tickets. But lo and behold, Anthony Mason will find a way as a kid to ruin any good opportunity. So in that moment, Mm -hmm. came home. My dad had got a call from the teacher. Long story short, my dad took those tickets in front of me, and he gave them to my cousin. Mm, That hurt. Who then went to the game that day. And had a good old time. And I had no idea that I was going to the game that day. Mm -hmm. So fast forward to last week. Mm -hmm. Our our child is going to the SZA concert with Sheikah, Mm -hmm. and then we find out that she wasn't doing what she was supposed to do. So in that moment, I reached back to where I was as a kid because Mm -hmm. Sheikah didn't have this experience because she was a stellar child. No. Okay. Stellar child. I was. <laughs> All right. So she didn't really have this experience. This isn't something that would have happened to her. But for me, I reached back to where I was as a kid. And in that moment, my dad took those tickets from me and gave them to my cousin. So in this moment, we don't have a cousin that lives close by to give the tickets to. Mm-hmm. Well, she kind of does. Um, but instead, I was like, I don't want to go to the SZA concert, but I'm going to do a little I'm going to do a little studying beforehand. We're about to go mm-hmm. to the SZA concert, me and Sheikha. But then in that moment, because I was consciously aware of how I felt, mm-hmm. she could can tell you. She called me a softie. Like, we're in the garage. Didn't wanna, he didn't want to break the news to her. You're going to have to tell her. I'm like, oh, my gosh. I had to record you standing there looking like you were about to cry to have to tell her she can't go. Matter of fact, we'll, we, we might upload a little clip of that down, <laughs> down right here so you can see what, what that looked like. Yeah. But it was a very difficult moment for me. But when I talk about conscious parenting and making sure that you're not repeating the same cycle, like in that moment, I know y'all are all watching. You're like, well, I wouldn't have gave her the tickets either. No, but what we did was we actually reached out to the teacher who actually texted us back and said he talked to all of her teachers yeah. and there were some grades that they had to upload. And once they did that, that evening before we left, before me and oh, you left her, for the concert, yeah. all her grades went back up. And, and it was it was a mix of, of her doing, you know, submitting work a little later, but then also of the grading was off as well. But mind you, she is a straight A student yeah. and then she's in middle school. So there is a change in environment, change mm-hmm. of responsibilities. The workload is different. Yeah. So, like, taking all of those things into account as a conscious parent. Yes. In that moment, everything in me, because we did deliver the news, she was heartbroken. Mm -hmm. It hurt me (laughs) to the core. (laughs) Hurt me to the core. Mm -hmm. But what I did in that moment was, I was like, let me do something different. And what I decided to do in that moment was, we still had three to four hours before she was to go to the concert. Mm -hmm. So, I evaluated everything about her in that moment. I said, Mm -hmm. I gave her news. She found out that this is the first time, and she wanted to go to this thing bad. I said, let me just look at how her body language is. Let me see how she handles the remainder of the day. 
from getting that bad news. And that will determine. So on top of her doing and getting her grades back to where they needed to be. Within a matter of hours. Within a matter of hours. They up, they updated everything. Mm -hmm. The dean of the school corrected and sent us a message. We we're very involved parents. Mm -hmm. But then and then I'm like, you know what? She's a straight A student. But let me see how she handles it. And when I tell you she took it on the chin, mm -hmm. she went to her sister's cross country meet. Like she wasn't moping. Mm -hmm. She came home afterwards, ate dinner, watched TV. Everything was normal for her. And in that moment, I said, you know what? This is probably something that my dad would not have done. Mm -hmm. But I see that she made it right. And I want to also make it right for her. Yeah. Um, she was still a little down, though. But she, she didn't. Was, she but, was, but even but even she when she was, was at so the kitchen upset. at the kitchen table, like, I mean, me, I couldn't even be around. Uh, yeah. If that was me, I couldn't it even wasn't be around. Because her, her whole aura was not normal because she was still sad about not being able to go. Um, but what we did was we we listened to her. We understood as authoritative parents and we got, you know, we set clear rules and boundaries. And at that point we said, OK, well, you know, you did mess up on your end for not submitting your work on time, even though you did a really great job on the work and your grades are back up. We still need to make sure that you are staying focused and your work is priority. So we did take her phone for two weeks so she can start prioritizing. And then um, she's grateful for, to be able to go to the concert. Yeah. So, so like, my question okay. is like, one, I'm I'm curious. Like, what would y'all have done? I know mm -hmm. a lot of y'all are like, shoot, they would did nothing. I would have went to the SZA concert. I don't <laughs> know a SZA song. <laughs> okay. So that's why. Oh my gosh. Um, uh -huh. but no. So like that. That's kind of what I'm talking about mm -hmm. when I when I speak to conscious parenting and not keeping the same cycle. Like, right. Could Breaking I have gone cycle. down that same path and done the same thing my dad mm -hmm. did? Yes. But I also know today. As a 39 year old man, 40 in a month in the next next month. Yeah. It next still month. sits next with month. me. It's so crazy. <laughs> but it still sits with me. Like for me yeah. to remember something from when I was 12, 13 years old, mm -hmm. and then to be in that moment right then and there and say, well, wait a minute, how did I feel? What could I have done differently? What could my father have done differently? Right. So then I look at that same thing when it comes to Chloe, it's like, what could we have done? So at the end of the day, like that's just what I mean when we talk about like the unique challenges, mm -hmm. really sitting back and not creating the same cycle. And ensuring that if it is something that makes sense from what your parents did, great, use it. Mm -hmm. But still, if there was a negative feeling that you had associated with that at that moment, and there was something that could have been done differently, do it. Right. But at the same time, that's the point of taking something away that a child really loves. It's, it's supposed to have a lasting impact. It's supposed to yeah, make you understand still with that. Me. Yeah, it's supposed Ooh. to make you understand that what you did was wrong, and it, the, this this could happen. Yeah, you know, in the future. So I I firmly believe in sticking to if there is a punishment as far as taking a cell phone, or taking you know TikTok, Instagram, whatever you're taking away that your child loves because they did something they were not supposed to do. Sticking to that time frame and that timeline because the world is not going to show them grace, you know, out in the world when they become adults. It's not going to not going to give them, you know, another or second, third and fourth chance. So you have to teach that now within the household before they go out into the real world. And those consequences are way worse. Oh, yeah, they're they're so, amplified. But yeah. then to that same point, though, like what I would also say is that there are there are societal pressures that also make you react a certain way when it comes to disciplining your children. Mm -hmm societal meaning so like for instance we're sharing right now about SZA yeah if I were to share that on a platform well You're like sharing I'm, I'm sharing now. right now <laughs> um there would be a hundred different opinions of how that actually should have gone mm -hmm. oh no there she's not getting the tickets to that right. or um nothing is happening until report right. cards come like whatever the case may be like for mm -hmm. me I feel like Silence all of those pressures and do what you feel and believe is best to handle that situation with your with your child because but there's not a one size fits all. It's not and it's not a one size fits all for children. So each child has a different temperament. Each child you will have to you have to parent differently. We have three daughters and they're all totally different. So, you know, one is very emotional, very um she needs more um she needs more attention and more you have to be a you, lot more nurturing. nurturing how yes, you deliver how, have, and has to be And then we have another softer. one that we have to deliver a little more passionate, I would say, you know, and making sure that she understands that, no, what you did was wrong and this is what you should have done. And then, you know, so it just depends on the child. It depends on the situation. And you can choose one of the eight or two or three out of the eight, depending on, you know, the child in the situation is yeah. what I say of the yeah. parenting, parenting style. So, um, hey, look. 
And now we love to hear from you. Like we want to know, you know, think of some parenting habits that you borrowed from your parents back in the day. Think of some parenting things that you can keep, you know, that you learned from your parents as a child and then things that you would just trash. You're like, no, I'm not I'm not ever doing that. Um, like us, we trash spanking our kids. We don't spank our kids at all. Um, we do pop. You know, they'll pop your hand when they're little, you know, whatever. They, they can each say that they got popped one time in their life. Mm -hmm, by you. And that is just to set the tone as to who's in charge. <laughs> so when you do something wrong the first time, I'm going to pop you for it. You know that it. That's you. I have to there. pop a couple times on the hands because. I can't. Yeah. I can't. You, yeah, no. But got me, three, yes. Got three girls. Got All right. Three. So, yeah. So, yeah, we challenge you to do that. And no, I definitely challenge you uh, to do that um, and really just look at the things that you are doing every single day when it comes to parenting mm -hmm. and consciously, mm -hmm. consciously become the parent that you desire. At the end of the day, mm -hmm. the parent that you that that you are missing or the issues that you bring up in conversation, if you're talking to I mean, and some of you out there, your your childhood could have been amazing. Like mm -hmm. I. My childhood was amazing, but at the same time, I do believe that there are things that each and every one of our parents could have worked on. Um, same for us. I'm yeah. pretty sure we're going to hear yeah, it, too. Our we'll, we'll kids going to be like, well, I wish you would have did this but or didn't be, do that. But just be cognizant of those things yeah. and be intentional about becoming the best parent that you can yeah. every single day. Because we are shaping the future of this country mm -hmm. based on the parenting that we currently have. So all of... The different things that we see, the one thing that we can do is control our parenting, how we treat our children, and what they grow up to be based upon how we, we raise them. Right. So drop your comments below, and um, let's get this conversation started yeah, you know, let's, about let's... being a parent these day and age and dropping things that we, we you know experienced as a kid and then things that we're bringing forward as well and new things that you may be doing as a parent. Yeah. Love to hear it. Yeah, yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed this um, episode. Uh, more to come. Definitely drop your comments. And remember to keep building. And, and stay, stay unstoppable. unstoppable.